Hello there, this is Rom Wills coming back at you with yet another podcast. Midnight, the Malik. <laughs> now, anybody who's followed me a long time know I'm a big fan of this fictional character, Midnight, and who was first introduced in the book uh, The Coldest Winter Ever uh, by Sister Soldier. And in the book, he was a lieutenant of a of a drug lord, a loyal lieutenant. And um, the thing was, the main character in the book, uh, Winter Santiago, was like in love with this dude, but this dude wouldn't mess with her. And just the way she described him, just, I mean, well, one, she was just physically attracted to him, but this dude was just disciplined and wouldn't bother with it at all. And, you know, they made him look very tough, very popular character. And then uh, after the coldest winter ever, you know, so many people liked the character. Uh, Sister Soldier, she did a series, a, a three book series. Um, in fact, people are looking for a book four in it, the Midnight series. And it was basically a prequel to the coldest winter ever. And, you know, she really she really got into the brother. Now, the brother was tall. They, uh, she described him as just physically attractive. Women were going crazy, but also he was a Sudanese Muslim. So, I mean, very, very tough, very tough character. I mean, they, you know, you go through it. He's, he was like a black superhero, like black ninjas, like martial artists, religiously devout, had two wives. In fact, they did. She did the character uh, in another book. She did. She had him show up, and he had three wives in the uh, book. And the thing I like the character is like one of the few fictional characters I identify with. One of the few. Because it wasn't a separation between his uh, carnal side, his physical side. Like they described him, I mean, this dude, you know, he had a body on him. Um, the women described him as handsome. So he definitely had that physical thing. But also his thing was just his mental process. Like they had one character in the third book, in the third Midnight book, a uh, psychologist who gave him an um, IQ test. And he's like, oh, this is, shoot, this dude, <laughs> this dude's something else. This dude is something else. And, you know, plus uh, in the books it established he was a businessman. Now, how, you know, as an aside, how Sister Soldier uh, reconciles that with him working for a drug dealer, that's going to take some creative writing. But... I personally just uh, bringing disbelief back into it. I think she had written a midnight character. It just became so popular. I think she was just like, oh, okay. You know, I got I, I to do something with this. But just the idea of it. I mean, if you look at Midnight or um, another character, I would say got kind of that Malik energy is Ghost from uh, power and just uh, just real quick Malik that's the term that uh, cousin t came up with for that dude who uh, had the energy of uh, you know had that good cross between I say Ray Ray and the Calter you know he could roll out in the streets was physical and everything but also highly intelligent and anybody who follows me know that's always been my thing. You read my books, that's always been my thing. Not limiting yourself to just one area, just saying, oh, I'm just intelligent. I was like, okay, can you hit the gym too? Can you lift? Um, do you have a physical presence? You know, can you operate in the streets, but then operate in the boardroom? You know, because, you know, that's been my philosophy. Like, a lot of people try to... Um, try to ascertain what I'm talking about. They'll watch one video that probably didn't have anything to do with what I actually teach because every video I do, every podcast I do, doesn't have anything to do with my book. In fact, uh, other than um, other than um, talking about the body game, I talk about very little for one simple reason. Um, I still want you to buy my stuff, and it's stupid to give it to you for free. So, you know, I'm still in business. But the one thing I will share is, like I said, that's always been the thing. Can you develop yourself on all angles? Now, this isn't like just some new thing or some new scientific thing. This is how I learned the game coming up. You wanted to be that thorough brother. That was the thing. You wanted to be thorough. The thorough brother meant the dude who was the star quarterback, <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, you play pickup games. This is a star quarterback, just the leader, but he also had that smooth rap for the ladies. And not as I don't think as much now, but back then too, also a decent student. Like the thorough dudes I knew, they they might not have been like the top student, but they still passed their classes. <laughs> They still were able to go to D1 schools for sports or something like that. You know, in fact, at my high school, many of the jocks, many of the jocks were also on the national honor roll. They they were routinely dean's list. You know, in college, it was uh, one of the players who was a dean's list student. You know, so that's not the whole concept ain't new. But, but one of the things I found, I think what's happened in uh, recent years, people have tried to split it. And it's basically that alpha beta split, that select, non-select, uh, the self-improvement crowd versus non-self-improvement, all of that. I think that's what's happened where people think, okay, well, this is what I am and just where I'm going to stay. Especially people who are more on the, well, let's, let me emphasize my more intellectual side. You know, instead of like really saying, like, let's do both. In fact, that's one of the things um, that's one of the things I found just with the sales of my books over the years. That's one of the things I found a lot of guys who might have been on that more carnal side, that more physical side, the more street side. Those are the ones who wanted to learn the more how to like get to the other side. Those have been my best customers, even if they were already educated in everything. You know, they always wanted to improve. I've had guys who were doctors, attorneys, ministers. <laughs> In fact, it's ironic. The first people to buy my books, some of the first men to buy my books were ministers. And they just wanted to know how to improve even more. And, you know, and that's one of the things. If you read my books, they always about developing on a holistic level. That's always been my thing. So, and, but the icon of that movement is Midnight, who read that book. Um, I used to say Ghost from Power, and in many ways, yeah, but yeah, I ain't going to get into power. I get, yeah, some of the stuff they've done on there, I'm like, okay, y'all done became a, a soap opera now. But I just like, uh, but the whole Malik thing, it's like, who says you can't, and there's no law that says you can't be both, either or. There's no, there's nothing. In fact, uh, if you look at like many of the great men in history, there's been many of men who, you know, they become statesmen and kings, generals, but they were also like, they had some street smarts to them. They had a rough edge to them. In fact, I remember what a friend said uh, years ago, one of my mentors, he said the most dangerous person can be some of these CEOs. And I've seen that. I've, I've seen that. I mean, shit, when I go to the gym in the morning, they be the main ones in there throwing up weight. You know? They the main ones throwing up weight. And a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of guys think, well, you know, they, I mean, come on, CEOs. Obviously intelligent. And you got to have a little, you got to have some, you got to, in fact, to be a CEO, to be a leader, you got to have really both. You got to still have that intelligence, but... You still got to have a certain amount of charm, physicality, because people actually follow based on physicality. Because a study was done to say, like, uh, the average height of a CEO was, like, around 6'2". So, I mean, I, that's some stuff. That's some stuff. And just having, like, that both, that energy. So it's like when I see characters like that, when I see characters like that, I was like, oh, okay. Like I say, you got me funny about ghosts now because I'm like, I don't know. I think they just, they wrote him into a corner. But that's another conversation. But Midnight, yeah, that's the Malik right there. That's the icon. So, you know. So I got a link to uh, that series in the uh, description box. So check it out. So anyway, that's all I got for now. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace and many blessings. <laughs>